Who is this Jesus? We continue to ask the question. But people have been asking it from the very beginning. Some of us uh, noticed last Sunday night that the question is asked on several occasions during the public ministry of Jesus himself while he was still alive on earth. After he had forgiven somebody's sins, they said, Who is this? After he'd stilled the storm on the Sea of Galilee, the apostle said, But who is this, that even the wind and the waves obey him? When he rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey in fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah, the whole city was stirred, asking, Who is this? The words and the actions of Jesus were so extraordinary that people were deeply puzzled by him. They couldn't make him out. Who is this? They kept asking. That's why we're asking it in these days. We come tonight to the fact that he is the suffering servant. The suffering servant. Now, anybody who has ever attempted to penetrate into the mind of Jesus of Nazareth, who has ever tried to grasp his own self-consciousness, has been struck by his concentration on suffering and by his insistence that suffering is the way to glory and death is the way to life. Now, it sounds very morbid. The world doesn't like it. The world wants its heroes to be tough, not weak. The world wants its heroes to succeed, not fail. The world wants its heroes to reign, not to die. So if success is the criterion for heroism, Jesus does not qualify as a hero. Because listen to some of these words of his. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected and be killed and on the third day rise again. Here's another one. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and after three days he will rise again. Here is a third. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Here's another. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Nobody takes it from me. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Here's another at the time of his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he would immediately give me legions of angels to rescue me? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? Oh, here is another after the resurrection. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer and to enter into his glory? For thus it is written that the Christ must suffer. You may remember that rather picturesque story of the Ethiopian finance minister who was jolting his way home in his chariot after attending a festival at Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot with the scroll of Isaiah on his knees opened at chapter 53. And when Philip the evangelist joined him, the Ethiopian said, Who is the prophet writing about? And we read, beginning at the same scripture, Philip shared with him the good news of Jesus. He knew that Isaiah 53 was about Jesus. So we're told in this chapter that when he suffered at the hand of God, it was not for his own sins, but rather for ours. That point is clarified in verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs 
and carried our sorrows. We esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, not for his own. Bruised for our iniquities, punished, which is the meaning of chastisement, in order that we might be made whole, and by his stripes we are healed. For all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We've turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him all our iniquity. That is, those are amazing verses applied to Jesus in the New Testament, that he took upon himself the penalty of our sins in order that we might be forgiven. So Jesus died in God's great love for us, in our place, in order that we might be forgiven. Well, you may say, what really does all that mean? As we've gone quickly through the passage, the, the chapter, what does it mean? Well, let me try to explain it. It means this, we are sinners, we have gone our own way, in our own self-centeredness, we've gone astray like sheep, turning deliberately away from God in order to live our own life. And we have therefore brought upon ourselves the just judgment of a holy God. And we cannot save ourselves that God continued to love us even when we were rebuffing his love and God our judge became our savior. He pursued us in the person of his son Jesus Christ who voluntarily assumed the role of the suffering servant. He was willing to suffer not only the physical pain of crucifixion and the mental pain of rejection but the spiritual pain of sin-bearing, entering into the God-forsaken darkness on the cross, enduring the penalty that our sins deserved, and dying our death in our place. All that is involved in his being the suffering servant. That is the suffering service of Jesus.